Sit back, relax, you're in the Cinema Lounge. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, this is going to be our pre-show uh, warm-up called Cinema Lounge, and we're going to warm up our vocals and talk about, um, for this one, we're going to talk about upcoming robot films. So next year, uh, there's going to be three, I counted, three robot films coming out. Uh, one of them is, of course, Terminator Genesis. Genesis? <laughs> Genesis? <laughs> Crap, I don't know any of their... What? Just... I guess so. It's just... Sega. That's what the that's what the title says. It's weird. It's not even spelled Genesis with an I. It's spelled with a Y. So it's, like, really goofy. Genesis? Because it's steampunk and cool and shit. <laughs> it's uh it's a regeneration of a system. So, so is it like a prequel? system It the plot is on the verge of winning the war against Skynet, Connor sends his trusted a lieutenant, Kyle Reese, back through time to save his mother's life and ensure his own existence. But what he finds out on the other side is like nothing he's never experienced before. After being orphaned at age nine by a Terminator, Sarah Connor has since brought up by another Terminator played by Schwarzenegger, programmed to protect her. This Terminator has then been tra trained her to face her destiny, which she ultimately rejects. Yeah, she's younger. She's casted. And she gets raised by a Terminator? Yeah, she sees... She looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, who is Arnold and Schwarzenegger? Terminator 1, when he, she starts getting attacked by Arnold Schwarzenegger, she's just like, who is this guy? What is this? This, this is not familiar to me at all. I'm so... <laughs> it's confusing as fuck. What is the genesis of? Exactly. It's not the genesis of Skynet. What is it, the genesis of Sarah Connor? That's fucking stupid. It's That's the reboot it of the entire franchise. That's what it's doing. Or maybe so. it's the genesis of, of uh, Robo Arnold's heart. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I am now programmed to have feelings. <laughs> it's, it's... What is this? I'm leaking. Hey, buddy. Oh, hello, Dougie. Who is Doshi? Doshi. Mr. Doshi. So, but that's okay. so this is Doug's name. His name's Buddy. Hi, Buddy. Buddy. It's so confusing the camera. Hi, Buddy. <laughs> Distracted by a dog. Goody. So this this is supposed to be one of a sequel. I mean, a trilogy. So this is the first of a trilogy. I'm thinking like, okay, it just makes no sense. Like, how is this gonna? I don't know. Have the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and wasn't it so much better? Yes, yes. I even have it on DVD. It's freaking amazing. It's it's. Really a... Oh, it's like. Tina the... Hedy and Summer Glau. I should be all over that. Oh, it's it's amazing. I mean, season two got really got cut off at the end, but otherwise, it's just. <sighs> Screw the other mother movies. Yeah, I don't get what they're. A prequel to actually see Skynet, that'd be a good idea, you know? Kind of like a plan of, what they did with Planet of the Apes. That worked. Why not do that with Terminator? It could go wrong, but it's a better yeah, idea than Sherlock Connor's childhood years. It does make sense, but then everybody's going to accuse it to, like, try to cash in on Rise of the, like, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But other than that, like, I could see how that could work. You just never know, and... Snooze and niggas because it'd be back. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, while you're talking about good Terminator stuff, don't forget about Terminator 2 3D. Oh, the park ride. Yeah, the park. Oh. Yeah, that ride. Oh, the park ride. Have you ever been? Have you ever been to Universal? No, I'm too Canadian for it. Yeah. Well, I'm Canadian as well. I've been there. Well, it, but well, Matt's more nice. American than Canadian. <laughs> I also have a I'm Disneyland. Disney Disney <laughs> mm. What? <laughs> so, uh, so the other two films that's coming out, there's one called Chappie. 
That's being directed. Yeah, that's what I'm checking out. Yeah, Chappie being directed. That was awesome. The director of um, <laughs> District District Nine. It's basically Chappie is a robot program with an artificial artificial intelligence to think and feel for himself. Think of it like this generation's short circuit. I was actually. Because this generation needed a short circuit. Well, the generate this generation's already getting a. A this, short circuit. Wait a minute, so. this generation yeah. has a short circuit. His name is Wally. <laughs> uh, that's like apples and oranges. Well, he's thing. Wally. Wait, Not I was really. about to say Wally like didn't. Sympathetic robots, they kind of look the same. I always yeah, but thought he so. doesn't talk. Yeah, Chappie kind of. doesn't talk, though. Yeah, Chappie starts to learn how to talk over time. It's just, he's like a, like a, a baby that these two inventors trying to raise it's like you can talk you can feel for yourself you can think for yourself and it's also got Hugh Jackman in it that does sound like something that the director of District 9 wrote there's it, more mm-hmm. there's also the mean... fact that it's like there's also the fact that it's also set like another similarity is that it's somehow set in the slums of South America like in Johannesburg or something yeah like that like that that's another addition there was a, there was a po- another a different podcast that I heard about like they were talking about Chappie, and they were arguing about like what's this director's problem with South like South Africa, it like just, always portraying it as like this ghetto slums land. It just it, he must have like a vision for what South Africa's gonna look like or something. I mean that's his trademark I guess in his films. Well, I think that's just what. What he's trying to go for is sort of the Rogue Warrior aesthetic there, which, um, what I'm, what I'm seeing it, I'm taking into account not just, uh, District 9, but also Elysium, which, uh, which, um, is not South Africa, it's supposed to be the future, it's supposed to be Los Angeles in the future, um, and, uh, he just, he just likes to make these places, or to make these places that look desolate, and make them even more so. Yeah. So, um, I also noticed that during that trailer, he couldn't bank off any credibility saying the director of Elysium. Yeah. Um, so that should be, uh... Well, he has to keep it of District 9, I mean. I mean, oh, District 9's like the best one he's ever done, and I guess people didn't like Elysium. I, I didn't hear a lot of it, positive like, stuff out of it, so. I, I, I think it's like, nowadays just sought after, you know. It was like, it was like, like when people when you talk about Elysium now, it's like Elysium, that's a thing. That Damon was bald. <laughs> yeah, well, there's been a, well nowadays there is a few times when Matt Damon is bald, so. I mean, as if it. In the future. You you think he might lose his hair uh, eventually, <laughs> just altogether, just grow a bald spot and lose that hair? Or maybe, maybe he's not balding. Maybe it's just his forehead growing. You know. <laughs> yeah, to to match the size of his ego. <laughs> oh. Um, I, I I watched uh, I, I remember I watched Elysium with a friend. Uh, he, he took he took me to go see it for my birthday. I didn't particularly want to go see it, but it was the only thing remotely interesting in the theater. And he decided to go ahead and shell out the tickets. I didn't like I, I actually didn't like District Nine for a few reasons, but Elysium I just. We both ended up enjoying it for exact opposite reasons. He thought it was a great movie because it was brilliant and it, it was so intellectually profound and whatnot. And I was laughing my ass off throughout the entire movie because it was one of the dumbest things that I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... With those, like, perfectly... perfect, perfect police robots. Honestly, I don't think I can have that reaction because I started watching Elysium. Um, my dad put it on, and I thought I'd give it a shot. I I was so bored. I was mm. so bored. I couldn't get through like the first couple of scenes. Then you just answered your own question: Why nobody is talking about Elysium? I don't know. I mean, I'm very hard to keep entertained. 
maybe it was just me. I mean, most post-apocalyptic stories I'm not a fan of anyway, because they're so bleak. I'm just not into yeah, that. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, true. I, I actually just saw, a, I just saw like a post-apocalyptic movie not too long ago, uh, not the animated film Nine. Like that, that is an, an example of like a post-apocalyptic film, but it's also really boring. That's not that Tim Burton movie starring the little big planet characters, right? Yeah, that's the that's exactly the one. That movie looks fun. It looks kind of eh, not really. Like most post-apocalyptic movies, it's just like dirt and rust and metal. But that movie it, looks like visually interesting. It is visually so interesting, like but Wally that's the only interesting thing. <laughs> okay, Wally. I like Wally. Well, that's another freaking story. Well, well, we'll we'll get into Wally. By and large, like that by and large ship, like that's not desolate. That has color. That's life. Yeah, by and large ship has a whole consumerism thing. I kind of like that. I like movies that poke fun at American consumerism. I'm gonna. I I already reserved it. I'm gonna talk about it. So yeah, so we'll definitely uh, talk about that. Um. So another film that's coming out next year is a film called Ex Machia, which is a film... Yeah. Ex Machia. It tells the story of a computer coder who wins the chance to spend a week at a house in the mountains belonging to a CEO of the company he works for, only to find out he's participating in an experiment involving a new brand of artificial intelligence, aka a robot with artificial intelligence. It's like a... Th- So, it's a film. Well, he wins a chance to to, to, to like ha- stay in a big fancy house. Yep, much. yep. Just spend time with this new robot with artificial intelligence and just participate into it in an experiment. It's like that Simpsons episode. Here's Brosnan. <laughs> Simpsons did it that? first. Is that I don't a know if that's an experiment or not. It's, it's uh, the Treehouse of Horror episode of The Simpsons. Oh, movie. yes, I remember. They like, yes, win a contest one. and they get to go into a house that's run by Pierce Brosnan, the AI. And it falls in love with the I think they won that. I think they won. I don't know. I don't recall. Or maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't sound maybe exactly right. like the movie, but it sounds very similar. Similar, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's It's a unique film it's i saw the trailer it was just like what the fuck is this <sighs> did sound like something i would watch but yeah look forward to seeing uh either ex machia terminator genesis genesi whatever the fuck you call it genesis why <laughs> genesis. call it terminator genocide <laughs> that makes sense though because at least genocide is somewhat related to the terminator story yeah genesis. that is true that is true, actually. See, Hollywood, I came up with a better idea. Hire me, please. <laughs> no, James, they can't. You're too smart for Hollywood. <laughs> but I didn't want to be smart for Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. nah, nah, James, you don't understand. It's a very simple process on how, how to get hired on Hollywood. <laughs> I had an idea! Look at my guys, age five! Money, please! I'm working on giving myself a full frontal lobotomy in the hopes of becoming a famous director one day. Yay. Yeah, all, well, all you have to do is just, uh, you can save money on the lobotomy ser- process if you just keep on doing plastic surgery. Lobotomy counts as healthcare, right? <laughs> Does it? I don't know. I don't know what healthcare costs what, what privilege and yeah, well, if you do it to yourself, I mean, it shouldn't cost you anything. It only costs you a fork in the eye. I, thought... I don't think you know how lobotomies work. <laughs> the most I you know in Bioshock Infants. It's like this, like oh. there was this, a long pencil-like stick shoved into the eye and then like <laughs> poked the right, right thing in the brain and then just like... Oh, yeah, I remember that. I saw a soccer punch. <laughs> How did he get over to this? I don't this? care about soccer punch. Oh, I get it. I have to watch soccer punch to give myself a lobotomy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <coughs> Pretty much. That might be a little bit too painful. I don't know. Maybe I should stick with the laser and the 
Well, if, if you if you actually sit through the film and you and you find yourself enjoying it, you might not need need the lobotomy. That's how it works. There were a few instances I try I tried testing, you know. I tried testing which movies would best would work best with lobotomy, but it didn't work out as well. I tried a food fight and all, all these people jumped out the window. You watched food fight with people in the room? No, I actually it's, it's, a a joke. Joke. It's, a it's a joke. It's a joke. I've never even seen food fight. Too many people are asking me to. My god. <laughs> Yeah, but do they have the money for it? No. James, you are not going to believe it, but there's a possibility I could have a lineup. Yeah, I think somebody did uh, donate for, to Patreon recently, I've noticed. Yeah, yeah someone... Yeah, you've been... Well, you got paid to do that... I got paid to do uh, The Legend of the Titanic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Got those freaking or got to got to face those freaking orchestra mice and that that and the giant giant puppy dog octopus face. Well, there's one thing you're not, and that's a racist. <laughs> hey, that babe is hot. Good thing I'm not racist. God. I tried telling my dad about the two animated Titanic movies. He's a history teacher. He oh, didn't believe good. me. Oh, I didn't tell him about the octopus first. I told him about the rapping dog. He was like, "You're making that up." You know the scary. <laughs> you know the scariest thing is that there's actually one guy who did the voice in both animated Titanic movies. It's okay. It, the guy who played the rapping dog is actually the villain in the other animated <laughs> Titanic. Oh my Which god! Which villain, the shark or the? The one with the sharks. But no, no, no. So he moved villain? up the food chain. Then. No, no, no. He's not the shark. He's the main. The one-eyed one. guy. Yeah, the one-eyed guy. The whaler. Yeah. Oh. The whaler. That's some dubious trivia right there. That, that, that is like, oh, wow. It's. <laughs> six... It was actually a fan who mentioned it. The guy who requested me that he mentioned that to me. It was like. Wait, huh? What? I, I gotta put that in. Like, oh my god, it's just crazy. That you is. Know, the saddest thing is that the same guy. He has done some good work. Apparently, he was also in the um, he was the he was in the first English dub of My Neighbor Totoro as the dad, I think. Hmm. Fascinating. Film trivia, just for your information. So it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad how like suddenly there's that one thing, where suddenly it's like, why did you do this? <laughs> it's like when you're checking out like Charlie Sheen's. Uh, like Charlie Charlie Sheen's filmography, it's like, oh, okay, he did, okay, he was in uh, Wall, um, he was in Wall Street, okay, he was in Platoon, and why is he in Food Fight? <laughs> All dogs go to heaven too. Oh, there. I don't know. You don't know what choices he made when he was sober or otherwise. Uh, <laughs> no telling that guy. I, I got. Know. I still love him in the shitty kills. You know why I got into food fight? Because I was on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. <laughs> yeah, some actors are different that way. Some of them get coked up and they make Blues Brothers. Others are coked up and they make food fight. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah, but uh, see, the thing is, after they make Blues Brothers, then they they don't last much longer. Most of them did. Then, then they'll continue that line of coke and then Wired happened. Yeah. Who was in Wired? That was also awesome. No, no, no. Wired is the story of John Belushi. A very offend I mean, offensive telling. You need to tell me John. things if I don't know them. I've never heard of Wired. Uh, to act that way. I don't know. You. You, you seem young. Well, I don't know. Well, it happens when I'm not. Well, when I'm not usually the brightest, so I can have my Homer Simpson moments. I mean, that's why I'm wearing a hard shirt. So you can have Homer moments. Yeah. Although I'm naturally born that way, so. All right. 
Jaina, your your camera is frozen with you looking at me like this. <laughs> it's not frozen on my side, so it's just you, James. It's on James' side, so it's not on my side, so it's all good. So. <laughs> Look at your condescending glare for the whole entirety of the. Just yeah. trust that that's why I'll be looking at you anyway. <laughs> yeah, just trust it. All right, so let's just uh, get this podcast going then. Okay, okay. <clears throat> nice little warm up there. See, we got friendly. We got warmed up. It's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just a sec, guys. Yep. Uh, got a buddy out. Good time. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I don't care. But okay. You you never seen Elf? Oh, Elf. Oh, that yeah. Oh god, we did. I don't remember that his name's Buddy. Really? His name is oh. Will. Oh, hey, yeah, this kid's <laughs> name's Will. I call every Will Ferrell character Will Ferrell. Just want to go back. <laughs> I guess. I guess it's so. like Jonah Hill. For me, that's Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill's characters have names? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's Jonah, there's Joan, there's J. Hill, there's Jonah Jay H. Hill. Hey, guys, there's only five more weeks until Christmas. Hey. <laughs> Yay. I already did a few uh, Christmas shopping, so I'm prepared. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas, <laughs> bah humbug. <laughs> okay, three, no two. Okay, wait. You're moving again. Ha <laughs> ha. No, I'm not. Hit him. <laughs> God damn it! So many funny moments. Okay.